Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. In this course, so far we have studied At Sandhi, Hal Sandhi, Visarga Sandhi, and currently we are studying Swadhi Sandhi. We have already studied most of the part of the Swadhi Sandhi and today we shall continue studying the Swadhi Sandhi and the remaining and final part of Swadhi Sandhi. What is a Swadhi Sandhi? Swadhi Sandhi is a Sandhi which substitutes the Swadhi suffixes and this substitution takes place in a specific environment of deriving a pada that is embedded in the derivation of a sentence or vakya. In accordance with the definition of a vakya, ekating vakyam, there has to be one thing, which means that a pada which consists of prakriti and pratyaya, there should be at least one pada which should have thing pratyaya obviously with the prakriti in the form of dhatu. So, the vakya should be at least of this kind, where you have pratipadika plus sup as one pada, pratipadika plus sup as the other pada and dhatu plus thing as the third pada. Now, in this case, this is a sup on the right hand side of the plus sign, this is followed by the second pada to be more specific followed by a prakriti in the second pada. So, in this case, this sup gets substituted by some other verbal element over here and similarly in the second pada, the sup in the pada, second pada, the final element of the sup in the second pada comes into close proximity with the prakriti element of the third pada. And then there is some modification that happens in this sup in this particular form and this is called Swadhi Sandhi. This is the generic explanation of the Swadhi Sandhi. And then we also saw what is a Swadhi. We said that Swadhi refers to Vibhakti. 14104 is the sutra which defines Vibhakti namely sup and thing. Sup is a set of 21 suffixes added after a nominal root or a pratipadika by the sutra 412 and thing is a set of 18 suffixes added after a verbal root also known as dhatu. This is stated by 3478. They are all referred to as swadi. Even though vibhakti also means some other suffixes in 53 1 to 27, why swadi, sup and thing are meant. And so the other example of swadi is this. So this is the specific example of the swadi sandhi, which explains the generic template that we saw earlier. So if you have ramas plus gramam plus nayati, where there are three padas, Ramas the first pada, Gramam the second pada and Nayati the third pada. So, Sa comes at the end of the first pada which is followed by Ga which is part of the Prakriti in the second pada. Sa is part of the Sup and now this Sa gets substituted by Ru first and then by U and then A and U they get substituted by O and then we get the finally derived sentence form in the form of Ramo, Gramam, Nayati. So, this Ramo is a Swadhi Sandhi example. Similarly, if you have Ramena, Gramas plus Gamyate, where Sa appears at the end of the second Pada, Sa is part of the Sup that comes at the end of the second Pada, followed by G and therefore this Sa gets substituted by Ru first, then by U and then a plus u becomes o and so we have ramena, gramo and gamyate as the finally derived sentence. These are the specific examples 
of Swadhi Sandhi. And then these are the sutras that state the Swadhi Sandhi. So the ones that we have already studied are Sasajusho Ruhu, Atorora Plutada Plute, Hashicha, Bhobhagogo Apurvasya Yoshi, and Hali Sarvesham. We have studied these sutras in a lot of detail. Now let us study in this particular lecture the remaining sutras, namely Rosupi, Rori, Dhalope Purvasya Dirghonaha, Etatta Dosulopo Akoranai Samase Hali, Sochi Lope Chet Padapuranam, Prathamayo Purvasavarnaha, and Nadiji. While we study Rosupi, we shall also study another sutra, Ahan, but we shall do that in a while from now. First, let us take up the sutra Rosupi for study. Rosupi has got two padas, Raha and Asupi. Raha is one slash one of R, which refers to the sound R. Asupi is seven slash one of Asup, which means something that is not a sup or other than sup. And so Asupi means immediately before something that is not a sup. The words continued from the previous sutras are ahan, six slash one of ahan, meaning in place of, and padasya, six one of pad. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The final element in the word ahan, which means a day, sound n, which comes at the end of ahan, is substituted by sound r, when something other than a sup follows immediately after. I repeat, final element in the word ahan, that is sound n, is substituted by sound r when something other than the sup follows immediately after. So here we have an example where we have ahan plus gana, n comes at the end of ahan and also pada. So this is substituted by r, so we have ahar gana and finally Ahar gana. Ro asupi. And then we have another sutra, Ahan 8268, which says the following. This sutra has got only one pad, Ahan. That is 6 slash 1 of Ahan, which means in place of. The words continued are ruhu, one slash one of ru, sound r and padasya. So the sutra means the final element in the word ahan, that is na, is substituted by sound r at the end of a pada. So I repeat, final element in the word ahan, that is sound na, is substituted by sound r and that is 2 at the end of a pad. So here we have a case ahan plus bhyam where bhyam is a consonant beginning suffix and so ahan gets the term internal pad. So this na comes at the end of the pad. So this na is substituted by ru and then this ru is further substituted by u. So we have aha u bhyam and then this a and this u there is guna sandhi that replaces both these vowels. So we have aho plus bhyam and so we get aho bhyam. Now there is a vartika which restricts the ru substitution of ahan in a typical environment. Earlier we saw ahar gana where Ru was not replaced by U. So Ru is replaced by U when Rupa, Ratri and Rathantara they follow. So we have the Vartika saying Anhoru Vidhau Rupa, Ratri, Rathantareshu Iti Vacham. The meaning is the Ru substitution in place of Ahan takes place only when following words follow. 
Rupa, Ratri and Rathantara in case of a compound. So we have Ahan plus Rupa, Na is substituted by Ru. So we have Aharu plus Rupa, then this gets substituted by U and then there is Gunasandhi. So we have Aho Rupa and then also we have Aho Ratra and Aho Rathantara. And that is why in Ahargana, R does not get substituted by U, it remains as R. Now let us go to the next sutra, Rori. There are two padas in this sutra. This is 8.3.14. There are two padas in the sutra, Raha and Ri. Raha is 6 slash 1 of R, referring to the sound R which means in place of sound r and re is 7 slash 1 of r that is sound r once again which means immediately before sound r. The word that continues is lopaha that is 1 slash 1 of lopa meaning deletion as substitute. So the meaning of the sutra is this immediately before the sound r in place of sound r substitute 0 or deletion. I repeat, immediately before the sound r, in place of sound r, substitute 0 or deletion. So we have punar plus ramate as the example. Here we have r at the end of the pada, punar followed by r at the beginning of the second pada. In this case, r gets deleted and so we get Puna plus Ramate as the next step of derivation and the derivation continues. The derivation does not end here. This is not the finally derived form. We need one more sutra to be studied in order to complete this derivation and that next sutra is this. Dhralope Purvasya Dirghonaha. This sutra consists of four padas. Dhralope Purvasya, Dirghaha and Anaha. Dhralope is 7 slash 1 of Dhralope. This means environment of the deletion of Dh as well as R. And 7th case means immediately before this environment. Purvasya is 6 slash 1 of Purva, which in this case means in place of an earlier element. Dirghaha refers to 1 slash 1 of dirgha, which means long vowel as the substitute. And anaha is 6 slash 1 of an, which means in place of. So the sutra means immediately before the environment of the deletion of dh and r, which eventually is dh and r respectively only, in place of the earlier an, substitute the long vowel. I repeat, immediately before the environment of the deletion of dh and r, in place of the earlier an, substitute the long vowel. So here are the examples. Punar plus Ramate, we had seen this example. Punar plus Ramate and because of Rori, this r gets deleted and so we have Puna and so we have Puna plus Ramate and now this R is the environment because of which this R got deleted. So when this environment follows the previous vowel, this A in N, this gets lengthened. So in this place comes a long vowel and so we get Puna and Ramate as the finally derived output. Similarly, we have Harihi plus Ramyaha as the basic input and the finally derived output is Hari Ramyaha. Remember, this is not the nominative or accusative dual of the word Hari. This is the nominative or nominative singular of Hari, Harihi. But when it comes into contact with this Ramyaha, this becomes Hari. Similarly, Shambhu Rajate, the basic input is Shambhu 
and then comes Rajati. And the Sandhi form is Shambhu Rajati. Now, also let us look at the example where Dha is deleted by the environment of another Dha coming right immediately after. Here is the example. Leha plus Ta. Leha plus Ta. And this is the participle suffix. We are deriving the past passive participle. Leha plus Ta. This Ha gets substituted by Dha by the Sutra Hodha. Then because of this Dha, this Ta gets substituted by Dha. So we have this Sutra namely Jashasta Thor Dhodha which does this. So we have Lidh plus Dha. Then Stunashtuhu applies and substitutes this Dha by Dha. So we have Lidh plus Dha. Then Dhodhe Lopaha 83 13 applies and substitutes this dha by 0. So we have li plus dha and then the an that is e that comes immediately before this dha is lengthened. So we have li plus dha. So this dha is the environment in which this dha earlier dha got deleted or zero substitution. So when this environment follows the previous vowel is lengthened. So we have li plus dha, that is li dha as the kridanta pratipadika derived as finally derived output of this derivation process. This is how dhralope purvasya dirghonaha applies and the final output in case of punar ramate is puna ramate. There is one observation that needs to be made. So this particular derivation proposes an exception to the Asiddha principle. Generally the output of the Sutra in the Asiddha section does not become the input for any previous Sutra and within the Asiddha section also the output of any latter Sutra does not become the input for any previous Sutra. But here we see first the output of the latter sutra in the Asiddha section namely Stanashtuhu becoming the input for the earlier sutra namely Dhodhe Lopaha and Dha gets deleted and then we see that the output of 8313 namely the deletion of Dha and Dha becoming the input for 631111 and so there is this exceptional behavior as far as these sutras are concerned and the Asiddha section is concerned. We also observe that there is one more example of this kind that we shall study in the Prakriti Bhava. Let us continue studying the Swadhi Sandhi Sutras. These sutras are primarily discussed in the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi. The next sutra is Etattados Sulopo Akoranai Samase Hali. This sutra has got five padas. The first one is Etattadoho, which is 6 slash 2 of Etattad, which consists of Etat and Tad, the two pronouns. Sulopaha is 1 slash 1 of Sulopa, deletion of Su, nominative singular suffix. Akoho is 6 slash 2 of Ak, meaning without sound k. Anai samase is 7 slash 1 of Anai samasa, meaning different compound than the negation compound or Nai samasa. And Hali is 7 slash 1 of Hal, which means immediately before a consonant. Anai samase means in the negation compound or in the Nai samasa. So the meaning of this particular sutra, we see that su as far as etat and tat is concerned is deleted in the right hand side environment of hal and when etat and tat is not part of the nai samasa. So the meaning of the sutra is this, immediately before a consonant hali, 
in place of su which is part of etad and tad etat tadohu which do not have sound ka as their part akohu and which are not a part of a negation compound nai samasa anai samase so in place of su substitute zero or deletion i repeat immediately before a consonant hali in place of su substitute zero or deletion sulopaha and this su should be a part of etad and tad etat tadoho it should not have the sound k as their part akoho and they should not be part of a negation compound anai samase so here is the example esha plus su this is the nominative singular suffix plus ramaha esha ramaha and so now this su suffix gets deleted because this is hal following this is etat and so we have esha ramaha as the finally derived output of this particular sutra 61132 similarly sa plus su plus shambhuhu and this su comes immediately after sa this is still a pada so this is part of etad this is not a nice samasa there is no ka anywhere here so this su gets deleted by this particular sutra and so the finally derived output is sa shambhuhu esha ramaha and sa shambhu in both these cases etat and tat they do not have k as their part and they are not part of the negative compound and so su which is part of etat and tat takes the form of zero or deletion similarly sochi lope chet pada puranam this sutra is 61134 and it is stating the deletion of su after s that is tad once again in a further limited environment namely the metrical quarter completion the padas in this particular sutra are 5 sas which is 6/1 of sas that is part of s and s <coughs> su is continued 6/1 of su in place of lopa is 1/1 of lopa which is a substitute zero substitution this is also continued lope is 7/1 of lopa that is in the deletion chet means if and padapurana means metrical quarter is complete so the meaning of the sutra is in place of su which is part of sas that is nominative singular of the pronoun tad substitute zero or deletion if after the deletion the metrical quarter is complete i repeat in place of su substitute zero or deletion if after the deletion the metrical quarter gets complete and this su should be a part of the form of tad so sas here is an example s plus su plus esh so we have this su gets deleted getting deleted and so we have s plus 0 plus esh and then there is sandhi of these two vowels which is a vriddhi sandhi so we have saisha as the resultant output now there is this metrical quarter that is fulfilled saisha dasharathi ramaha this is a quarter of anushtub which requires eight letters and so we have saisha comprising of two letters had there been no sandhi then there would have been sa esha three vowels that wouldn't complete the metrical quarter now we it completes so we have saisha dasharathi ramaha sochi lope chet padapuranam now let us come back to another set of sutras namely prathamayoh purva savarnah so prathamayoh purva savarnah is now referring to not ru 
but referring to the other vowels when the prakriti is preceded by particular kinds of sub suffixes. This is different than the previous ones and that is why stated at the end. So prathama yoho is 7 slash 2 of prathama meaning in the first two cases that is in the prathama and the dhritiya cases. Purva savarnaha is 1 slash 1 which means homogeneous sound of the earlier sound. Words continued are akaha 5 slash 1 of ak, achi 7 slash 1 of ach, dirghaha 1 slash 1 of dirgha and of course ekah purva parayoho which means one substitute in place of two substituents earlier and later. So the meaning of the sutra is this. In the first two cases that is prathama and dvitiya when immediately before ach any vowel appears ak then in place of both the earlier and later sounds substitute the long vowel of the homogeneous of the earlier vowel. I repeat in the first two cases that is prathama and dvitiya when immediately before ach that means any vowel appears ak then in place of both the earlier and later sounds namely ak and ach substitute the long vowel of the homogeneous of the earlier vowel namely ak. So here we have ak plus ach in 1, 2 and 2, 2 for example and so this ak and ach will be substituted by the dirgha of ak. This will be the output generated. So if you have hari plus au, hari has got e which is part of ak, au is an ach. So now in place of both of them generally eco energy might apply but now this sutra says that in place of both of them substitute the long of this previous vowel. So we have har plus e, e substituting both these e and o and so we get the finally derived form hari. Similarly bhanu plus o, 1, 2 or 2, 2. Generally this is the scope of application of eco energy but this is cancelled by prathamayo purva savarnaha and we get in place of both u and au the long homogeneous vowel of the previous sound that is u that is bhanu as the output generated prathamayoho purva savarnaha. The negation of this is stated in this particular sutra 61104 nadichi. There are three padas in the sutra na, ad and ichi. Na means not the negation. Ad is 5 slash 1 of a which means immediately after a and ichi is 7 slash 1 of ich which means all vowels minus a. So ichi means immediately before ich. The words continued are prathama yoho and purva savarnaha and dirghaha. The meaning of the sutra is immediately before H when A comes in the first two cases then in place of both do not substitute the long vowel homogeneous of the earlier. So if we have Rama plus O where A is followed by H generally this is the scope of application of Vruddhi Sandhi and we would have got Rama but then Prathamayog Purva Savarnaha comes in and says that in place of both of them substitute the long homogeneous vowel of the previous sound. In this case it would be A and we would get the form Rama. But this sutra negates this and says that in place of both of them do not do the Purva Savarna Dirgha rather continue with the normal Sandhi and then we substitute vruddhi in place of both and so we have the form ramau as finally derived output. Similarly dirgha jasicha. This sutra is 61105 and this is also a negation of prathamayo purva savarnaha. 
This sutra has got three padas. Dirghat, which is 5 slash 1 of Dirgha, which means immediately after a long vowel. Jasi is 7 slash 1 of Jas. Jas is the nominative plural suffix. Cha means and. Prathama Yoho is 7 slash 2. Purva Savarnaha, Dirghaha and Na. So, and also the word Ichi continues. So, the meaning of the sutra is this. And immediately before Ich and Jas, when a long vowel comes in the first two cases, then in place of both, do not substitute the long vowel that is homogeneous of the earlier. I repeat, and immediately before Ich and Jas, when the long vowel comes, in the first two cases, then in place of both, do not substitute the long vowel that is homogeneous of the earlier. And here are the examples. Nadi plus us. This is the example of just. So Nadi plus us and we don't apply the Purva Savarna Dirgha. We applied, applied rather Yanadesha and so we get the form Nadyaha. Similarly, Nadi plus Au. So, this is the Drivachana and this is the Ich following. And so, Nadi plus Au, once again, Purva Savarna Dirgha does not happen. We apply the Yan Sandhi and so we get the form Nadyau. Similarly, Chamu plus Au and we get the form Chamu and we get the form Cham Vau and not Chamu. Similarly, chamu plus us and we get the form chamboha and not chamu. In all these cases, in the absence of this particular sutra, we would have got the form nadi over here, nadi again in this case also, chamu in this case and chamu in this particular case. This would be indesirable. So these indesirable forms are avoided, are negated, are explained by this particular negation, Dirghajya Sicha. To summarize, we studied more substitutes in place of Ru, which was stated as a substitute of Sa at the end of a Pada. They are primarily Ya and Zero or deletion. Several occurrences like Dhartarashtra Rane can be explained using the sutras that we have studied in this particular lecture. Due to the principle of the Asiddha using which the sutras are arranged in the grammar, absence of Sandhi is explained. However, we studied a few exceptions to this Asiddha as well. So we close the explanation of the Swadhi Sandhi over here. Next we study the Prakriti Bhava in the next lecture. I thank you for your attention.